Hello everyone, my name is Obiama Kalagbanije and this afternoon I'll be talking about building a naive based tech classifier with scikit-learn. Um, so, like I said, I'm from Nigeria and I'm a graduate of computer engineering from the University of Lagos. And I've worked in the IT, telecoms and travel industry and um, I heard that Data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century. And I said, okay, I want a piece of that action. So I hopped on a plane and I'm currently studying data science at Robert Gordon University, Aberdeen. So um, the objective of this talk is to hopefully help you understand how naive based algorithm works and why it's such a good algorithm for text classification and also show you how it's implemented in Python using scikit-learn. So um, Naive Bayes is a supervised learning algorithm that is based on probability and Bayes theorem. And um, Bayes theorem is actually named after Thomas Bayes, uh, a clergyman from the 18th century he was kind of trying to figure out the proof of God's existence and somehow found a new way of thinking of chance. However, like, um, it wasn't really implemented until Pierre Simon Laplace came along and um, you, um, developed it to what it is today. So um, Naive Bayes' algorithm is a supervised learning algorithm that makes that is a supervised learning algorithm and it's, it uses probability by calculating the, the probability of a class given um, an instance and then assigning that class to the, uh, assigning that instance to the to the class with the highest probability. And this can be, sorry. Okay, naive base is probabilistic because it calculates the probability of a class given an instance and then assigns that class to the instance or the, assigns that instance to the class with the highest probability. And this is done by counting the number of, sorry. Sorry, this is my first talk, I'm really nervous. Okay. Naive base is considered naive because it assumes the features are independent of each other. And by feature, in terms of text classification, I mean the words. And um, that means that it doesn't consider the word order, but it considers the way, um, the frequency of the words in the text document. Um, Advantages of Naive Bayes, it's very simple to implement and it's very fast. It works well even when the assumption of feature independence doesn't hold, especially in terms of text. Um, it deals well with data sets that have very large feature spaces. But the, the naivety of Naive Bayes also makes it not work well with expressions that have a combination of words with unique meanings. For example, um, in Google's early days, um, if you search for, say, um, the basketball team, Chicago Bulls, for example, um, you would get results like the um, city of Chicago and Bulls, not the actual basketball team. Um, so here is the, the equation, and it seems a little complicated. Even to me, I don't, I don't really understand it myself. Um, so hopefully by the end of this talk, we'll all be able to, we'll be better able to understand what it all means. So um, the data set I'll be using for this um, talk is the YouTube spam collection set, which um, is a corpus of text documents 
that was um, gotten from the UCI Machine Learning Rep Repository. And um, it's a corpus of um, comments from five of 10 of the most viewed videos are, um, around 2011. So we have um, Size Gangnam Style, Eminem's Love the Way You Lie, Shakira's Waka Waka from um, the World Cup of 2012, um, um, Party Rock Anthem, um, and Katy Perry's Raw. Um, this corpus was um, provided by Alberto et al. And you can also, it's, can also be found on their website. Um, it consists of, consists of about 2,000 um, comments, and, and 1,005 of them are spam, and about 951 are harm comments. Um, so um, for this talk, I used Python 3.6.5 um, and um, Jupyter Notebook. And I also used um, um, Scikit-Learn. Um, and then you could, uh, you could download that with um, PIP or Conda. But you could also use Anaconda, which has all the packages you would need to get started. So um, you would need some experience using Python and a little knowledge of machine learning and natural language processing. Now, before I get to the code, um, I would like to give an example that would help conceptualize um, the inner workings of the naive base algorithm. So um, say, for example, you're, you want to find out if a comment is spam or ham. Um, how would you do that? Like, conceptually, for, um, it's done by, um, we would use this example of five toy comments to um, fit, to build our classifier. So um, these comments have um, two spam and three ham. And then we introduce this new instance of a comment. And we want to find out if it's spam or ham. Um, how do we do that? First, we have to give the machine learning algorithm a, a a form of the data that it can understand, and it doesn't understand text. You can't give it text. So <coughs> we have to sort of encode our, our text to numbers, which it does understand. And to do that, we would first um, tokenize the comments. And tokenization means breaking the, the text into pieces, called or tokens, and then we change um, the text to lowercase, and then remove stop words. Stop words are words that have little or no information, like a, the, um, um, with, things like that. And then we count the words, and then that's, those are numbers, right? So that's something that the algorithm can work with. And then these are all, collated into what is called a document term matrix. So now we have numbers which the, the algorithm can understand. And then we want to find out, um, I love song, is it a spam or ham comment? So we use math, we use Bayes theorem, which I mentioned earlier to calculate this. So um, this is the math equation for that. So first, um, okay, let me go back. Okay, let me quickly explain. So we want to find out if the probability of the, the comment being spam, given that it is I love song, and the probability of that comment being ham, given that it's I love song. And the plan is, when we calculate these probabilities, we find out which one, we compare them. Whichever is greater is, um, the, the label is assigned to the um, comment. So let's, okay. So first we find the probability of the documents, all documents in general being spam. And this is simply counting. We can see there are five, um, comments. 
So we count the number of spam and the number of ham separately, and then we divide, we divide each of them by the total number of comments. And then um, we then find the probability of each individual word in the comments. Remember, I mentioned the assumption of independence by, um, that Naive Bayes um, uses to classify the um, data. So we, we would break the I Love song into individual com um, tokens and then calculate the probabilities of each word in I Love song given that the given that the label is spam and given that the label is ham individually, and then we multiply it. So we can see that we, um, we calculate the number of times that love appears in spam, and then you calculate the number of times that, it, that song appears in spam, and then you divide it by the to total number of words that are in ham altogether. And then you do the same for ham. And then you multiply them. So next, the two probabilities that we calculated will then be multiplied. And then we compare the two. We can see that um, the probability of ham, given that the comment is I love song, is significantly greater. So that's obviously ham, uh, ham, which intuitively you, you would know that it's ham based on the comments. And now for the code. So um, first, we load the data set into our environment. Um, the data set is actually five CSV files. So I had to figure out a way to um, import all files at the same time, so I used the glob function and the glob function from the glob um, module to do that. Um, it just selects the pattern of the patterns that ma the files that match the pattern of my directory and then um, I create an empty sorry I create an empty data frame and an empty list and then through a loop I create a, um, for each file for each um, file in the, in the list, it's a data frame is, is created and then appended to create a full, a full data frame. Um, then we want to see what the data frame looks like. So there are five columns and some of the columns may not be important to us, but let's just have a look at um, the first few rows, and then we confirm that the size is about 2,000 by 5 data frame. And then we, what we need is the text, right? So we would want to use um, um, the iLock method um, to, to kind of sli um, slice or select the rows and columns of, that of, are of interest to us, which is the text. So. Um, you can see that we just have two columns now, the text and the label. The label being the, the class. And there are two classes, ham and spam, where one is ham, and where one is spam and zero is ham. We confirm that it's uh, the dimension that we would expect. And then we, we um, split our data set into training and testing. Um, for, this, um, talk, I'm, for this talk, I'm using a 70-30 train test split, um, where 70% um, of the data set is for training and 30% is for testing, for evaluation. Um, I had to separate the 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 data and the label to be able to um, 
pass it through the train test split function. And then I confirm that it's about the proportion that I want. Then now we do the, um, we convert, earlier I showed you the, the way the text is converted to a documentum matrix, right? Changes into numbers that the, that the algorithm can understand. So now that's what we, are, we want to do here. We want to create a documentum matrix. So to do that, we use the count vectorizer, um, the count vectorizer object. So um, the count vectorizer is, is actually what's called a bag of words um, method of feature extraction. Because I, feature extraction is basically creating um, features that the model can understand. So um, what it does is I simply count the number of terms in a comment or a text. So for the for the for this um, count for this um, count vectorizer object, I chose them. I use the stop words argument, which is obviously to um, I selected English to remove the stop words, which are low information um, words that we don't need. And you can use that. There are a lot of arguments in count, in, for count vectorizer, but I just decided to use this one. Um, then we use the fit transform method, <clears throat> which um, creates the, the parameters the bag of words parameters that we'll, we'll be using to create our documentary matrix. The parameters are example like the frequent, the number of times the words appear. So, um, and, the, and the transform part of that fit transform method transforms, uses those parameters to transform the, our text into a documentary matrix. And then we transform the test set as well, so document and matrix. Um, so now we, we now want to implement naive Bayes. Um, so we get our um, naive Bayes um, classifier from the naive Bayes um, module from sklearn, and then we fit our data to create, our, to build our model with the training sets. And then we evaluate um, our model. We run predictions and then evaluate our model. Now, there are several ways of evaluating your model. You could, um, but for simplicity, I'll be using accuracy and the confusion matrix. Accuracy is basically <clears throat> the number of positive, um, the po um, correctly classified um, um, data that was um, by the model. And from our results, we can see that it's 91.1%. And then the confusion matrix is just a way of illustrating how, where the model went right and where it went wrong. So um, the model was able to correctly classify 289 spam and 246 ham comments, but misclassified 43 um, spam and nine ham comments. So um, I want to talk about another form of feature extraction, which is called um, term frequency, inverse document frequency. Um, term frequency, well, uh, let me just say TFIDF. Um, it's, it's the same thing as um, bag of words term frequency, but what it does is it also it, it counts it counts the number of terms in a comment or a document, but it also considers the number of times that the number of document that that um, term appears in. So it doesn't just so it adjusts the width. It doesn't just think of the frequency; it also thinks of the number of 
the number of times that a word appears in all documents in the, in the corpus. So um, for this, I'll be using the TFIDF object um, vectorizer object for the f feature um, extraction text module. And um, I set the arguments, the stop words argument to English again, and then I use a max TF argument to, and I set it to 0 0.7. The max TF argument um, simply um, um, sets a threshold. So um, it's, it removes um, terms that appear in more than a certain proportion. So in this case, 70, so if, if a word appears in 70% of the, 70 and above and in documents, 70% of the documents and above, the, the term is removed because it's considered unimportant. So it's removed. And then after um, I fit, uh, I use the fit transform method to um, con um, convert my text to a document term matrix so that the model can understand it. Then I also do the same for my test sets. And then I fit, I initialize a multi, uh, naive base classifier and fit and then fit my model. I do testing and training, and then there's a there's a some slight improvement. The, from the accuracy, I can see that it's 91.4 percent, but that's a very slight improvement, and it could be just due to chance, maybe the way I split my data, or or it could be because of the settings on for the max TF removing those terms. Or it could also be because of I chose TFID, TFIDF. But um, I guess the best way to do this is to use the same settings in both situations, in count vectorizer and TFIDF, and then compare the two properly to get a better comparison. Um, then the confusion matrix shows that it was able to classify 289 um, and 248 spam correctly and misclassified 41, spam, and 9 ham. So um, um, we've looked at two possible methods of classifying, um, implementing um, naive Bs in scikit-learn, count vectorizer and TFIDF vectorizer. But um, how well did this model do, um, and can it be improved? So um, one way of improving your model is by tuning it. And tuning is basic, um, basically like adjusting um, the dial of your radio set to check for your favorite station, something like that. And in Naive Bayes, one way of tuning is called Laplace smoothing. So Laplace smoothing ma basically um, makes sure that the probabilities of terms in your, in your text are not zero. Because when you multiply, everything becomes zero, basically. So in order to mitigate that, it adds a constant called alpha to make sure that the probability is not zero. So um, to implement this in Python, I set a range of alphas from zero to one and, we, and with increments of 0 0.1. And then I created a function train and predict with alpha as, a, as the argument. And then in the function, I fit my da um, data to the model and run some predictions and calculate the accuracy. And I run it through a loop with those alphas like I created earlier, um, earlier, the alpha ranges I created earlier, and print, I print it out. 
And we can see from the results that um, the alpha 0 0.3 and alpha 0 0.7 are the highest. And that's, that's OK. That seems like a reasonable, but it's still a bit small. So. Um, so um, I talked about the naive Bayes um, algorithm and why it's such a good algorithm for working with text and also how to implement it in Python. Hopefully um, we, you were able to understand what I was saying all this time and you can better appreciate this naive classifier. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have five minutes time for question. Um, you put it all the characters lowercase. If you were analyzing something where you wanted to know what were the emotions, and people generally um, express anger or something by all caps, how would that be affected by, um, the, like, how would your analysis be affected? I know it's a little off point, but I'm just curious how you would handle that. That's a good question, and maybe I would have to find out myself. <laughs> Well, that's a good question. So, any other questions? So then, maybe I have. She oh, wants to ah. ask a question. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, in in your examples, you you get probabilities of ninety one percent. Uh, so for anyone who would want to try to write something like this, 91% uh, doesn't seem very accurate. Uh, what, what, are we, what are people supposed to, to expect? Is, is actually, am I wrong? Is 91% very good? Or um, how, do you, how do you know what to expect and to know if, if your uh, filter, if, if your algorithm is working well or not? Well, um, it depends. Like, it's really subjective. Really. Like, it depends on, how do I put it? It's subjective, really. Like, 91% could be good to some people. It could be. But you could, there's still room for improvements. Like, there's something called lemmatization, which could make the model even better. I didn't do that here. It's basically, um, um, making those words that are similar, like maybe go, going, all those words are pretty much the same thing. Go, going, went. You could group all those words into one word. So that would have probably have improved the model, but it's all subjective really. Like 91% could, might probably be the best or not. It's, it depends on you and what, what, you, what you want to do with the model, basically. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that helps. Okay, one question out there. I think an accuracy of 91% is very good, and I, I wouldn't trust if it would be 99%. I would be, uh, um, I think, um, yeah, from, from the scientific point, I think that 91% uh, is very good. Okay, so if there's no more questions, give a big hand to Obi Yamaka again. Yeah.